Welcome to the first episode of Rooted Wisdom, exploring tribal agriculture. I'm your host, Tish Mindeman, and today we're exploring an important area of IFAI's work, the Native Youth in Food and Agriculture Leadership Summit. Join us as we shine a spotlight on the next generation of Indigenous leaders who are passionately working for food sovereignty and sustainable agricultural practices. In our interview with a past participant, learn about everything from innovative projects to powerful stories of resilience as we uncover how these young minds are shaping the future of tribal agriculture. Tune in as we celebrate the voices and visions of Native youth igniting change and building a brighter, more resilient food future for us all. And find out how you can be a part of this exciting opportunity. Hey everyone, this is Tish Mindeman with the Rooted Wisdom Podcast, and I'm here with Summer Wilkie, who is the Next Generation Program Manager for IFAI. Hi, Tish. Hey! So today we're going to talk about the Youth Summit that we have. It's the 10th anniversary. Yeah, that's right. It's the 10th anniversary of our Native Youth in Food and Agriculture Leadership Summit. That's awesome. So I know that 10 years is a huge deal. So we're going to be doing some alumni outreach and we're also implementing a new track. Yeah, that's right. It's really exciting. I'm so pleased to be um, hosting a celebration as part of our summit to just acknowledge the 10 years that we've been hosting this event. It's always really, really fun each summer, but we're just going to focus even more this summer on making the event a celebration and incorporating a lot of um, fun and celebrating this work that we do. So outreach to our alumni is a big part of our priorities too in looking back at the last 10 years. So we're looking at some different ways to engage our alumni and we're also hoping to be able to invite them at least virtually to attend some part of the summit. So um, any alumni out there of our youth summit, uh, be sure and reach out because we're trying to find you all. And I think that the theme this year is Skoden Studis. That's right, Skoden. So uh, it, incorporating that indigenous um, background and indigenous humor into um, what is going to be an excellent, excellent summit. I know that we have the previous tracks that we've done. I love, I think that may be my favorite part of summit is that it's not just students coming to learn from people who maybe have been out of the game for a long time, but but actually learning from people who are out there doing the things. We have a law and policy track where we have actual tribal agriculture lawyers come in and teach them. And then, yeah, we have land stewardship and conservation, ag business and finance. Um, We work really closely with the Intertribal Agriculture Council in hosting this summit. And um, Padley Gonzalez, who just joined IAC's um, Regenerative Economies portfolio is going to be taking over the ag business and um, finance track. And then, of course, we're adding the new animal science track. That is so exciting. Um, I think it was kind of a gap in our um, in our curriculum, but uh, we're looking forward to adding that new track, which is going to be really focused on hands-on experiences, and um, we hope to kind of reach a new audience with that. I love the fact that um, we are going to be able to show students not only indigenous agriculture, but traditional foods and um, go and tour different places. Where where might we go this time? We, we don't have our uh, field trip scheduled yet, um, but some field trips that we've done in the past that were amazing were uh, we visited the Osage Nation to see their uh, nonprofit uh, harvest lands. And we also visited their bison and beef uh, processing plant. So that was one field trip. And then last year we visited the Cherokee Nation's heirloom and medicinal plant garden. And we also got to go see the Tribal Alliance for Pollinators headquarters out at the UG Butterfly Farm. We really pride ourselves on trying to 
provide some real concrete learning opportunities for everyone and have some rigorous scholarship included in our event. It's it's fun and it's going to be an even bigger celebration than usual this year. That's our goal. But we also try to make sure everyone leaves um, with their head full of new knowledge and, and having been exposed to some new concepts, some amazing role models, but also um, having been challenged academically to some extent because we really feel like um, we're, we're nurturing and fostering uh, the growth of some of our next generation of indigenous leaders in the United States. And so we, we take that really seriously and we want to give them opportunities to hone those skills. Speaking of alumni, our communications director, Mary Bell Zook, recently caught up with Mackenzie Martinez and was able to reminisce about her experience as a Youth Summit participant, youth leader, intern, and track facilitator. Mackenzie is an interregional manager with the Intertribal Agriculture Council and a graduate of McNeese State and Arizona State University. She is one of our youth participants who has gone on to become an advocate for sustainable agriculture, food sovereignty, and racial equity spaces, especially on her tribe's ancestral lands in northwest Louisiana. Here's what she had to say about the summit and how it has played a part in her life. Bojo, Mary Belzuk, Nadezhnikos. Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Belzuk. We are incredibly grateful to be able to have Mackenzie join us today on Rooted Wisdom. So welcome, Mackenzie. Hey. Well, I thought we could start out. Tell me just a little bit about yourself, what your tribal affiliation is, as well as what you do for work. Okay. Uh, so my name is Mackenzie Martinez, and I'm a member of a state-recognized tribe in Louisiana. We're Choctaw and Apache descent. Um, so for work, I work for the Intertribal Agriculture Council. I'm an interregional manager under the Technical Assistance Network. When did you attend our Youth Summit? Over the past eight years, I've been pretty engaged in the Youth Summit in a few different capacities. So in July of 2016, I attended the Youth Summit the first time as a student. And this opportunity came about when I was attending the inaugural Southeast IEC Youth Summit in April of 2016. And they were really encouraging us to go attend the summit that's going to be happening in Arkansas later in the summer. So I was applied and I was accepted and I jumped on a plane for the first time by myself and flew out to Fayetteville and attended the summit in July of 2016. Then in 2017, I was invited back to attend as a student leader. And then in 2018, that's when the summit took on a um, different structure. And I was a student in the land stewardship track. In 2019, I supported IFAI as an intern during the summit that year. And then um, I... I think that was also in the law and policy track as well that year. And then in 2020, uh, or whatever year the summit was virtual, I joined in as part of the law and policy track for that year. And then, um, like I said, over the years, my role in the summits have changed. And in 2022 and 2023, I helped facilitate the health and nutrition tracks. Wow, you have been involved for a lot of our different summits. And that's interesting that you were able to be a part of when we had you know, younger cohorts on as well as our kind of newer setup, which is more geared toward that 18 to 24 year old range. So looking back at the summits when you were participants, so not necessarily when you were more involved kind of on the administrative side of things, but back when you were a participant, what were some of your fondest memories? So I would say some of my best memories as being a student participant in the summit were the in-person visits to the different tribal facilities. Those were opportunities to visit things in person that I wouldn't necessarily see in my own community. And it um, gave me a good idea of just all the possibilities that are out there and ways that tribes can get engaged in agriculture, it really opened up a window for me that wouldn't have been possible 
without the summit, I never would have gotten to visit all these places and get this idea of what Indian Ag can be without those in-person visits to the tribal facilities at the summit. So definitely um, look back on those and have some really great memories. Awesome. Yeah, I love going on those tours as well. Get to learn about how different tribes go about food sovereignty in their communities and how innovative tribes are and then be able to to think about ways that my community might be able to improve. So uh, that's just from, you know, a staff's perspective. So I really enjoy them as well. They're my favorite part, actually, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really a game changer whenever you get to see these things in person and talk with the staff that help run it on a daily basis. And it, yeah, it just really helps seeing stuff in person rather than just reading about it on social media posts and the internet and things like that. You kind of highlighted this a little bit, but would you want to talk a little bit more about how Summit helps connect you with others across the country and your career today? So um, one of the first things that come to mind is the fact that I still have friends that I talk to every day that were also attendees at these summits. And um, one of my best friends is actually part of a tribal community in Maine. And without the summit, I never would have gotten connected with um, the great friend that I have now because of it. And it's been really interesting to um, see both of our personal growth over the years of we, as we've stayed connected. So that's been really great. And it's definitely helped me in my career as well. Um, just all of the connections that you're able to make with the different speakers and different attendees. And one person that comes in mind specifically is Miss Janie Hip. She really opened a lot of doors for me. One of those being um, my time as a congressional intern in Washington, D.C. for the House Ag Committee. Had I not attended the summit and met her, I'm confident that that would not have happened. So really appreciate her and just the opportunity to get to connect with professionals that can really make a difference in a young professional's career. Well, what would you tell someone who was interested in potentially applying for the summit that was maybe on the fence? What's something that you would tell that individual? This is something that I tell youth all the time that um, <clears throat> I get to connect with through my current job. So first things first, fill out the application write the essay, fill out the application, get those letters of recommendation, get your resume together, all of that stuff. That's that's the first step. If you never apply, you'll never even be considered. So fill out the application. Don't be afraid. Go in really open-minded and just don't hesitate to follow up on things afterward because you never know um, with that follow-up what kind of doors might open. I think that is fantastic advice. In your opinion, why is it important that we get Native youth involved in food and agriculture and that they take advantage of opportunities through organizations like our organization here or even IAC and y'all's youth programming? But why is it so important to get them engaged and geared up into that? One of the things that especially comes to my mind and my personal experience with this question, it's the fact that I'm not a farmer or rancher myself. I learned about all these things and textbooks and the different summits I've attended and things like that. But it's important to tell youth and make sure that they know there are so many other roles to fill in agriculture and food systems beyond just being that practicing farmer and rancher out in the field. There's really a place for everyone. And there's so many needed roles that are um, needing to be filled right now. So even if you don't fit the stereotypical mold of what a farmer or rancher looks like, there's definitely a place for you in this field. Tell me about the backgrounds of maybe some of our individuals who come. Do they just come from one area or? That's really a good point to talk about the diversity of the group that we um, recruit into our programs is really 
broad. It's amazing. We have young people who come to Fayetteville, Arkansas, where we, we were, where we host the summit from Maine, from California, from North and South Dakota, Arizona, New Mexico, Hawaii, Alaska. It's really, really special to get to interact with such a diverse intertribal group of your peers. I feel like that's one of the biggest strengths. It's not any of the programming that we do. It's not the, um, you know, the rigorous academic projects or the role models. It's them getting to meet one another and just learn how diverse the experiences, the issues, the strengths are in our communities across the United States and how much we have to learn from one another. And I always hope that they stay in touch and that they can be a part of one another's networks throughout their whole career and life because I think we're all stronger together and, and being able to create an intertribal space uh, for learning and sharing experiences. I, I think that's really, really powerful, a, a powerful aspect of the summit. And are applications live now? Yeah, applications are live now through the beginning of April. So um, there, it's a really simple process, but we do want to know a little bit about uh, you and your interest in agriculture. And um, we have a selection committee that we put together who reviews those. And if you're accepted, then it's free to attend. So, Summer, as we wrap up, can you tell me about your favorite memory or your favorite thing about the summit? I think my favorite part each year is the capstone presentations that all the participants uh, give in a group. They Each track is given a problem statement that they're going to solve with a group. It's a group project. Um, and at the end of the summit, their group then presents back to all the participants and some of our staff at IFAI and some of our guests and other staff from the Intertribal Agriculture Council. They present to us all um, what they uh, what their project has been and how they would be uh, solving that problem. And um, I am always blown away by the knowledge that all of our participants have that they're bringing into this uh, project and solving this problem and um, everything that they've learned through the week that they are applying to the solving of this problem. It is just always so amazing uh, to hear from them what they have learned and how they can see the direct application in a community, you know, in their capstone, it's a pretend community generally. Um, but these things have real life applications that I know they grasp and then can take home and apply. And as an educator, I can tell you that um, being able to use that that higher order of thinking and applying and synthesizing that knowledge is really what's going to help them retain that information and be able to utilize it and transfer it to wherever they go next. Yeah, it's just so fun to see that happening too. And I'm, I really think that's a an important component of our Youth Summit that's really fun for me every year to get to witness. So if you had one minute to tell somebody about the Youth Summit and why they should apply, what would you say? I would tell them that we all need food to survive. Agriculture is critically important, and especially in indigenous communities. And if you want to come and have an opportunity for free to meet indigenous youth from all over the country and learn about agriculture together, then this is the opportunity for you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget that the 10th annual Native Youth in Food and Agriculture Leadership Summit is open to Indigenous youth from across the United States, ages 18 to 24, and applications are now live through April 1st. Apply online at indigenousfoodandag.com.